This week's episode of the 50 Info Show is somewhat unique and calls for a different type of introduction. This, as you may recognize, is police headquarters at 620 West Washington Street. Join us if you dare on this haunted Halloween tour of the building as this episode goes directly to the 50 Zone. Hello and welcome to the Phoenix 50 Info Show. I'm your host, Lieutenant Vince Lewis, coming to you once again from Phoenix Police Headquarters in beautiful downtown Phoenix. And I'm joined today, returning to the show, the Phoenix Police Department historian and former public information sergeant, Yes. Sergeant Vincent Cole, welcome back to the show. Thank you. And with another brightly colored shirt. Yeah, from Cole's. Yes, from Cole's. And if I hear it correctly, you're swimming in Cole's cash. I'm swimming in Cole's cash. Yeah, that's, yes. that's tremendous. <laughs> Excellent. Well, hey, I wanted to talk to you today. It's a very special episode. It's the season of uh, Halloween and haunts right. and things. And you and I did a episode a while back. In fact, probably a year ago. Yep. We did a special Halloween haunted episode at the old city hall jail. Is right. That right. That was second. Um, what would have been Second Street in Washington? Uh, second Avenue. Uh, it used to be uh, Seventeenth South Second Avenue was the address. Okay, and uh, we've done lots of um, other stories related not only to that building but Phoenix Police history. Um, you had a huge hand in uh, the re the, uh, the dedication, identification, dedication for a fallen officer that we added to our our right. honor call. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. That was. Uh, Star us? Johnson, yep. right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I had uh, myself, Rob, uh, retired Lieutenant Rob September, um, a few commanders, uh, Commander Disatel, Commander Lopez, uh, and a couple of chiefs, Assistant Chief Elmore, uh, retired Assistant Chief Conley. They were pivotal in getting that uh, accomplished. Yeah, a lot of hands. So it, the great thing is, since I've been on here, is all of these um, new efforts to really uh, kind of delve into the past, identify uh, things that may not have gotten the, the, the recognition and the attention that they had before, right. uh, David Star Johnson being one of them. But um, we're here today to talk about the building that we're in. And uh, we're, we're I, don't really, I don't really know how more accurately to describe what's going on, but we're gonna sunset this location because we are looking forward to moving into a brand new police headquarters. Right. That's if the, if we refer to it around here as 100 West or 100 West Washington is gonna be the new address, but it's the old Wells Fargo building, right? Right. Uh, do you know anything about that building? Yes, I, uh, so prior to that building or the, the Wells Fargo building, it was the Fleming building. And there's a ton of history on that in the city. But one of the interesting things about that building is it served as our first uh, public library. It was started by a group of ladies called, I believe it was called the Friday Night Club, and they, it evolved into a full-on, what we know today is the library, but it started in one of the rooms there. But uh, awesome building. I've only seen pictures of it. I've never seen it in person, but the pictures of it, it was just a really cool building downtown. And that's like a 24, 26 story building. It's Yeah, it's, somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. So I'd imagine at the time it's, it's pretty well dominated the skyline. Maybe we thought... It did, you know, and I believe it had one of our first elevators downtown. It had a couple of things to it. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, and then of course, uh, some names like Wells Fargo, uh, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, a few other entities have occupied that building since, right? Right, yep, uh, Maricopa County Sheriff, I think they had their own floor, but uh, the building has largely been known as Wells Fargo. It's just had various tenants throughout yeah. the years. There was a bank that was operating on the ground floor. Right, and, and so a forth. museum. Yeah, yeah. oh, a, a museum for Wells Fargo? Wells Fargo Museum, okay. yeah. Um, before we get into the building that we're in, uh, since we're on the topic of ghost stories and supernatural, are there ghosts in that building? Yes, there's, uh, there supposedly is ghost. I haven't researched a ton about the ghosts that exist in there, but I've heard that there's been stories uh, prior, probably from its prior, uh, what it was prior to the Wells Fargo building. All right, so we're gonna have to bring you back and talk about that next yes. week. Yes. All right, so let's talk about where we're at. 620 West Washington, the Phoenix Police Headquarters. The building was dedicated, did you say, in 1975? 1975, yeah. But it was it didn't start out as police headquarters, the building that we're in, correct? No, this was a shared, it was like a public safety building. Uh, Fire and PD used it with us. But if you look at the exterior of it, it's got uh, um, what's called brutalist uh, architecture. So it's very 1970s, very bunker-esque looking. Um, and um, I was curious at what had been here over the years because anyone I had talked to had always remembered Phoenix Police Headquarters being here, but this isn't our first headquarters, and obviously it's not going to be our last. Um, there was a town marshal's office when we were a town marshal, um, and then we had another facility around First Street in Washington. Um, that's torn down, and it was torn down to build Old City Hall, which is 17 South 2nd Avenue, uh, and that was built around 1928. 
We talked about that in the prior episode. I believe it was 28. And then uh, in, there was a need for us as we grew as a city to get a more uh, technologically advanced facility. So we moved here. And obviously, we're going to be moving from here to the new building as our needs grow. Okay. So there's four stories in this. Our executive staff and chief are on the fourth floor. So informally, we always refer to the brain trust of the department or the executive staff or the, the lead as the fourth floor. When directors come down from the fourth floor or when you have to go up to the fourth floor, that's right. what we're referring to, right? Okay. Right. So, um, but that also houses our fiscal management and our uh, legal units as well. Right. And I believe where fiscal is now is where fire once was when they occupied their administration buildings or uh, administrative offices, I believe, occupied that area where fiscal is. Okay. And we're currently, we're in the press room right now. We're on the first floor. Mm -hmm. uh, the first floor houses, obviously, the uh, information desk. And you sent me a link to an old uh, Wallace and Ladmo episode. Those of us from Arizona, from Phoenix, remember the Wallace and Ladmo show was, you know, big in the 80s. That's, you know, 70s, 80s when I was growing up. And you can see um, Wallace actually comes to the police headquarters with uh, his police escort, right? and they show them the information desk out front, right? Right, and they show all the uh, cutting edge technology of being able to operate doors remotely. And um, they it's funny because if you watch that clip, the front of 620, the lobby is much smaller now than it was. We've blocked that off and made it more, uh, you know, pers uh, police personnel only. But at one time that was all open. And where the downstairs sergeant's office is, uh, where the desk sergeant's office is, is now that was like uh, vending machines or something at one time. So I know that um, sometimes that we still get uh, visits from media and reporters would, would have come to the front information desk to look through the booking locks to see who was booked overnight, right. to see if there's any kind of media stories that, you know, uh, that they could pull from, right? Right. And they could just walk right in to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, what else would kind of business would transact at the front desk? Uh, general information. I'm sure people have come in, you know, tourists and things like that, wondering what's there to do and things like that. But, um, you know, the thing that baffles me to reiterate is that it was just open. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now for safety, we have that kind of blocked off. So there's a window for people to come to, but people could just come up to the desk, ask probably about um, anything that a precinct would get asked about, you know, uh, community meetings, things like that. That was all taken care of at that information desk. So okay. kind of the nerve center of the department. All right. We'll see if we can put a, link, a link in the description to that that video clip that we're talking about, and you can compare today versus then. Uh, so that's the first floor where uh, public affairs office is there as well, um, uh, body worn camera unit, all on the first floor. Uh, the second floor is our general investigations unit. So it's it's a right. violent crimes bureau, but. We used to refer to it as a general investigations bureau, but that's your homicide, robbery, uh, adult sex crimes. Um, there's interview rooms up in there. So when people get arrested, they get interviewed by detectives. We'll take them up to the second floor. They'll do their interviews there. Third floors, typically it's 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 community relations, but there's other elements that are up there. Right, but, property crimes. Yeah. So um, I'm going to draw your attention to the third floor because I don't know what you've heard, but I've heard that there is a ghost on the third floor. I have not heard that before we talked. Oh, okay. Well, so what happened, what, as I understand it, the, the polygrapher's uh, office is up there, uh, those who do the polygraph, the lie detector test, um, but shared with that room for a brief period of time were the recruiters. And the door to that room is locked for obvious reasons. We want to make sure that we safeguard personal identifying information from those who are applying for the department, but also the results of those polygrapher's examinations. Right. So um, there is a door there with a window to the hallway. Um, and as I understand it, the recruiter shared with me this information that he was the last one at work, all alone in the evening hours, and out of the corner of his eye, he would have to watch out for somebody that was going to be at that door, because you can't always hear them knocking, but you could see them standing there. Right. So as he's continuing his work, gets the indication there might be somebody outside that door, puts down his pen and his whatever, his glasses, his mouse, his keyboard, stands up to go walk in to open the door, and there's nobody there. And this has happened a couple of different times too. Um, the, as I understand it, the commander's office is also a hot spot of supernatural activity. Have you heard that one yet? I haven't heard that one. No. Okay. So, and I did speak to a commander and I won't mention their name, but they, they get a, they get a, a feeling that um, there might be something going on that's inexplicable. But um, I brought you on this, hoping that you could kind of either verify or give me some more stories. Do you know of any other contacts that we had in the building? So I, I know a little bit about what was here. And again, everyone just remembered this as Phoenix Police Headquarters. So chatting with a couple of different people, 
I had found that um, there was a couple of things that were on this property, but <clears throat> I found a photo of what was known as the New Mills Boarding House. And that was built in 1893 with an address of 618 West Washington. So it would have been on the exact same where we're standing now. And boarding houses back then were similar to motels. And there was a lot of check-ins and check-outs, but very transient stays. People weren't there for long periods of time. And I'm assuming that a lot of those stories derive from, from that era when this was a boarding house. Okay. Um, so... I'm going to call you out on a story that you shared with me in confidence, but it has to do with the building that you're currently in. Yes. What? Tell me about that location. So it's at uh, 16th Street and Buckeye on the northeast corner. And if anybody's lived in Phoenix for any amount of years, they'll know, they'll remember that as the Golden Gate neighborhood. And it was a full-on neighborhood. There's some remnants of it that exist today. There's uh, Sacred Heart Church. And it's kind of in the middle of an empty field. You've seen it. That's that vacant lot with just this old style church building. Right. Square, square in the middle of it. Right. And prior to that, uh, the demolition of that neighborhood, that was a full on, uh, you, that, that church sat in the middle of uh, several homes and communities and things like that. They tore all that down. They left the Sacred Heart Church there. But there's been some reports that the building that we're in now, which is an office building, um, some noises, some voices, uh, and a couple of odd things that have happened in the building uh, since we've been in there. And one could only surmise that that's a remnant of things that occurred, you know, when it was a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But we haven't been able to pinpoint exact instances that are causing, you know, the the unnatural or the supernatural occurrences in the building. Okay, well, so we're bringing it back to 620. We're talking about what used to be here at the time. And um, I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but you said it was a multi-story boarding house, mm -hmm. right? And weren't you telling me about the way that they used to cool? So this is Arizona, right? It's right. Phoenix, very hot all the time. Um, air conditioning is a relatively new um, introduction, I guess, right. to the Phoenix area. I mean, that it had is. a lot to do with the settling and the boom a population here in the Phoenix area, at least, as right. I understand it. But there were still unconventional, I guess, at the time, ways of cooling the rooms of the floors at the, uh, in those multi-story wooden buildings, that like much like the one that would have occupied the space that we're in. Yep, right? they called them sleeping porches. So they would have, uh, your room would basically have a balcony, but the intent of the balcony was to sleep outside, and they would hang wet sheets on the uh, exterior of the balcony. So when the wind blew in, you almost had like a swamp cooler effect. And I, can, I, I don't know how much cooler it was in the valley, specifically the downtown area back then, um, but I imagine it was because there was less concrete, less steel buildings and, and things like that. But if you look at some of the older hotels and photographs, uh, you can see what was, you know, everyone thinks it's these large balconies and they're actually, to sleep in. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, hey, I want to thank you for coming back and giving us uh, hitting us with that history. Yep. Um, go back and look at the old episode that we have from last mm -hmm. year. Find out the the, the ghostly uh, activities of the the old city hall jail. Yep. Uh, thank you, Sergeant Vincent Cole, for joining us yes. one more time. Thank you for having me. And uh, I want to thank uh, the crew for producing and the listeners, viewers for watching. You can see video episodes of our Five O Info show on our YouTube channel. Um, I just want to remind everybody out there that you too can. Help solve crime in your community by sending tips to Silent Witness. Visit silentwitness.org or call 480-WITNESS. You potentially earn a cash reward when you send in those tips. Uh, visit us on all social media platforms. We are hiring. Go to joinphxpd.com. And remember, we're all in this together.